So, con is not optional. So, if you're in a situation where it's unlikely your puppy's going to come to you, you might not want to use cum in that situation. Find some way to go get them. Find some other way to entice them to come to you without actually saying cum. You want to make sure if you say cum, even if you said it without thinking about it, you still need to find some way to enforce it and find some way to get them to come to you and reward them. So, if your puppy happens to get away from you and it takes a long time to get them to come to you, and you're not very happy about it, guess what? You still need to pretend you're happy about it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That's what you because, oh, because if your puppy, let's say Cooper darts out the front door and you've spent the last half hour chasing him around because he's having a great time, you're late for work, you you know, all kinds of things going on, you're not very happy, okay? But he finally comes to you. If you scold him, what are you scolding him for? Scolding him for coming when called, right? Because the consequence is right after whatever behavior just right. occurred. So my rule about coming when called is you can say whatever you want to your puppy once they get there, but you have to say it in your happy voice. Okay? So if you really want to tell Cooper you're just ready to strangle him and you're very upset, you can say that. You just have to sit and use your happy voice to say it. Okay? I like that. <laughs> It makes you feel better because you get to say what you want, but the dog, the okay. dog should be, the dog should be being sure about that. How you're so, so, so it still is. You're you need to, if they them. come to you, you need okay. to reinforce that because if I, if you're my dog say. finally comes to me and I right. scold them, what's going to happen the next time yeah. I call him? He's not going to yeah, come. Even though he took his little okay. sweet time. <laughs> yes. Um, and then the next Cost time we're going to say, I'm really going to practice that much better. Make sure that situation doesn't happen again. Okay. So we need, to, we need to try and prevent those situations from occurring in the first place, okay? which is why we don't say come in situations where we're not sure. So here's how I want you to think about it. In any situation, if you're not willing to bet $100 that your dog will come to you, you probably shouldn't say come yet in that situation. Okay? And I want you to keep track because you can pay me the $100. You to say that, okay? No problem. <laughs> okay. Um, so, reward every time, make sure we only use it when, when we're sure we can get them to come. Because right now we're trying really to develop a habit. The habit is when they hear the word come, they come racing to you without thinking about it. That's what I want. I want them to do it without thinking about it. Because what happens if they stop to think about it? Well, let's see, there's, there's squirrels running around over here. Would I rather go to dad or would I rather go chase the squirrels? I don't want them thinking about what their options are. I want them going, such good things happen when I come. I want to get over there as fast as I can to see what it is this time. Okay? All right. So we're going to work on coming when called. What I want you to do is when they get to you, I want you to reinforce for 30 seconds. Okay? Because I want to get them used to coming in and sticking around. If I pop them a treat right away and they take off again, that I'm not, I'm not really getting what I probably want because I don't think any of you really want your dog to dart in and dart off again. So I want to get them used to sticking around and I do that by making the reward very good. So if I'm using treats, I'm not using much more than I do for a sit or a down or any of those things, but I want to make sure to them it seems like a lot more. So I'm going to make it last. I'm going to do little pieces and a little nibble at it. I'm going to make it really last long, even though it's not a lot more than they get for anything else. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. okay. okay. If I'm trying to get my puppy to come to me, other than food, what can I use to entice them to actually come to me? So not, not the reward once they get there, but what can I do to entice them to come quickly to me? Toys. Toys work well. Noise. Noise. Excitement. Patting on the ground. Yeah, what do, you, what do you want from your puppy? You want enthusiasm, right? right? If you're not very enthusiastic, your puppy's probably not going to be as enthusiastic. What happens when you get all excited and mess around? What does your puppy do? They get all excited, right? What happens when visitors come over and go, oh, what a cute puppy! It's all wound up. So, <laughs> so what we want for coming is some enthusiasm. We want them excited about coming. We want them to think, this is fun, this is the best thing I can do. This is, this is the coolest thing there is. Okay. Um, so your tone of voice, your body language, your movement. What gets these puppies, so when they're playing, what gets puppies running when they're playing with other puppies? What is it that entices one puppy to run? 
and they we get ahead of them. They, if Cooper ahead. starts running that way, what's Brenda going to do? Go after it. Yeah, because it's that movement that right, gets them excited, right. Right? right? So oftentimes, rather than just standing still, if you're moving away from your puppy, they're much more inclined to come after you. Okay, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to if I'm going this way at them, they're more inclined to go the other way. Okay, so if and we'll just use Cooper as the example again. If Cooper just started out the front door, and you're chasing him down the block. He sees you chasing him. What direction is he going to think he's supposed to be going? The way you're going. Same direction you're going. He's right. like, cool, mom's coming. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, <laughs> but if you're able to get his attention and he sees you going the opposite way, what's he going to do? He's going to oh, the game's over there. He's going to start following you. Okay. So think about what you're conveying to your dog other than just with the word you're saying. If I'm, if I'm saying come, if I'm saying the word come, but my tone of voice and my body language are saying something else, What's the dog going to respond to? Body, body, body language. language. They're much better at reading body language. They don't speak English. We're teaching them English as a second language, but they don't speak English. Okay? <laughs> but they're very good at reading our body language, our tone of voice. They're very good at picking up on what we're feeling. No matter how hard you try to hide it, um, they're very good at picking up on what we're feeling. So if I'm feeling, if, I'm, if I've got an angry tone of voice, if I'm upset, they're going to they're gonna pick that up from me and they're going to be less inclined to come to me because do I really want to get that close to you if you're upset? Probably not. I want to keep my distance. Okay. So sometimes if they're not coming, what do we do? We get more upset because they're not coming. Our tone of voice starts to go up. Our body language gets upset and they are less inclined to come to us rather than more inclined to come to us. And then we get more upset because they're not coming, right? So it's a vicious cycle. All right. So let's see. Can I borrow Gus? Sure, may. So a lot of people, as puppies, they think, oh, my puppy does great. I can take them off leash wherever we go. And then when they hit adolescence, all of a sudden they realize that <laughs> it's not working so well anymore. Um, so we want to make sure that we're working on that every day, a little bit every day. Um, during adolescence, you might want to think very strongly about not allowing your dog off leash unless you're in a fenced area because you may have a hard time getting them back. Even if they've done well before, they may hit a, a point where they've hit an independent streak and you may have trouble getting them back. So during the puppy and adolescent stage is the time where you keep things pretty well controlled 
we work a lot on coming when called, and by the time they hit maturity, if you've worked on it the right way and you worked on it enough, what you should see is at some point things click with them when, they, when they've matured, and you've got a great dog who responds right spot on every time, or just about every time, except for that one instance where there's some distraction you never planned for, and um, so it's, it's never 100% of dogs, okay? Keep that in mind, it's never 100%. Hopefully, as you go along, you never hit that, that one situation out of the 100 that, they'll, that they won't respond to you, but it, there's always that possibility. Okay. So, coming when called, let's review. What does come mean to you? First of all, you need to have a very clear picture of what come means. Okay. What if they're busy doing something else? Do they need to immediately stop what they're doing? Do they need to come racing to you immediately? How fast do they need to come to you? Is it okay if they just walk, walk over at a leisurely place, pace, or do they need to come flying as fast as they can? Once they get there, how close do they need to be? Do they need to be right at your feet? Can they be out here? Do they need to be right in front? Can they come anywhere around you? How long do they stick, need to stick around once they're there? Okay. So a lot of dogs are very good at coming to you, but what happens as soon as they get that treat or as soon as you reach out and try and grab them? Boom, oh, they're out of there. Or they come racing to you and just fly right past you. Okay. So. Have a very clear picture in your head what come means to you. Does it mean come, sit right in front of my feet, and don't move until I release you? You, you need to have a clear picture. There's, there's no right or wrong. It's you need to have a clear definition, because you're not going to be able to teach your dog what it means unless you are sure what it means. Okay. Okay. First rule about coming when called needs to be rewarded. Right now, we need, we need to establish a 100% reinforcement rate with come. Something really good needs to happen every single time they come to you. Okay? And when I say something good, I don't always mean treats. Treats some of the time, but I want them to anticipate something really good happening, but not always knowing what it's going to be. It might be treats, it might be a toy, it might be playtime, it might be going for a walk, it might be petting and praise, but it, it's going to be a variety of 